I don't think Fifty Shades is that far removed. I mean, I know it's been slated for lots of different reasons, mainly its use of cable ties and other inappropriate equipment. But um, the essence of, of kind of basically power play and turning yourself over to somebody else and them getting to control what, what sexual experiences you have, that often is at the root of a BDSM relationship, of a deep, what we call the dominant submissive relationship. And that can work either way, it can be male, female, female, male, or any other gender combination actually, your gender is irrelevant. Um, so I think, I think that kind of the essence of having a contract and all that kind of stuff, very few people ever go that far. But a contract is actually quite useful. Um, certainly with my clients, we would set out quite carefully in emails before what was to be expected and what was going to happen between us. Um, just to avoid any confusion and any upset on either part. Um, because as much as services, what people pay for is boundaries. So they pay for, you know, they pay to know what's going to happen to some extent. Um, this idea that, I think it's a bit of a misnomer, so you, you think there's this powerful woman in control and she's going to do anything she wants to you within a set hour, but it doesn't really work like that because, you know, you've got to kind of negotiate beforehand. So you sort of do like an improv where you pencil out a few things that could or couldn't happen and you, you carefully say what, I de what you definitely wouldn't want to happen, what might be a turn off for you and then you work within that script. But I think the main thing is just playing with power um, but playing with it in a fair way. So the thing that you never want to do is get really angry with your partner because they've dragged you around Ikea for three hours and then take it out on them in the bedroom. Like it doesn't, it's not a very useful channel of energy. Um, or feeling excessively jealous about something that might have happened, building up some kind of resentment and then taking it out on them. It's not always that healthy. But there is a way of sort of, you can kind of, you can kind of sort of use that and channel it in, in a healthier way. So um, it's, I think it's perfectly fine to say, I'm really annoyed with you about what you did this morning. And I think we should have some fun with that. And so as a result of that, I think, you know, we can go to bed and you're gonna satisfy me for an hour. You're going to do exactly what I want because this morning you really peed me off. You know, like I think that's quite a fun and interesting way and it's quite a good sort of like catharsis for people. So yeah, I think doing something like that's all right. Um, I think people can play with jealousy as well, which is something like you've got to be careful with it. But I think that the biggest problems people that are in long-term relationships is they stop seeing their partner afresh. Like the way they, when they first saw them, they were really excited to be around them and they were captivated by them and they saw them as a sexual being. And you know, if you hook up, if you've been together for a long time, if you've got children together, domesticity grinds that down. You know, there's a kind of direct negative correlation between intimacy and desire. And the more intimate you are, the less you desire each other. It's unfortunately how humans are programmed. The novelty factor is really, really important. So something that I recommend people do is, and they've got to be secure in their relationship to try this out, but if you've been together a long time, it can be really fun to go to a party or a bar together and let each other flirt with other people. Um, draw some guidelines up, so say no exchanging of phone numbers and no touching below the waist or, you know, whatever you want to kind of draw up. But let somebody go and be flirted with and, and have that kind of thrill of being seen as attractive and new to somebody else. And it's like a massive af aphrodisiac if you watch your partner being desired by somebody else. So I think for people who've been in a long-term relationship, that can be a really, really fun game. And it's coming up to Christmas, so there's plenty of opportunities to do that. Um, I would just say kind of control the alcohol, because again, like if you're drinking to excess, you're not going to have that much self-control. Things could get out of hand really easily. So I'm not advocating people mess with their relationships <laughs> this holiday season. <laughs>